Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining today's session with Wagners as a part of NWR's Vantage Point Conference. And um, before we hear from Cameron Coleman, CEO of Wagners, and Fergus Hume, CFO, uh, who are both on screen, just a couple of reminders. Today's format is designed to be interactive. Um, we'll hear a quick five to 10 minute overview of the company from Cam and Fergus, um, followed by a Q&A session. We do encourage the audience to submit questions through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, we'll endeavour to have this wrapped up by five minutes to two. Um, so without any further ado, I'll pass it over to you, Cameron and Fergus. Uh, thanks, Sam. And uh, yeah, welcome everyone to the presentation. Um, I thought I'd kick off just by, uh, as Sam said, a quick overview of what we do at Wagners. Uh, we're a vertically integrated construction materials and services business located in southeast Queensland. So uh, if, if we start with sort of our larger revenue producing um, business, which is our cement and fly ash business. We manufacture cement uh, on the Brisbane River at our pink and bar grinding facility. So we import clinker, the main ingredient used to manufacture cement, and we grind that and uh, service the Southeast Queensland cement market. Um, that then ties into our batch plant network, along with many other customers in the cement industry. Uh, for fly ash, we have a fly ash offtake facility that we are a consortium member of out at the Milmarin Power Station, where we draw fly ash from the power station. And rather than send it back to landfill, we classify that fly ash and uh, consume that in cement. And, and that consortium sells fly ash to the Southeast Queensland construction material market as well. So that, that sort of covers off what we do in our cement and fly ash businesses. Um, we then run a number of concrete plants across southeast Queensland where we produce concrete um, and sell that concrete through to the consumers. Um, the concrete business has been a bit of a tough industry for us over the last five years. However, in recent years, we've seen a significant, um, in the recent 12 months, we've seen a significant improvement in the, uh, the market conditions for concrete and uh, quite excited about the finally the, the turn um, in selling prices that we're enjoying now in the concrete business. Um, to complement the concrete business and part of our vertically integrated model, we run a reinforcing steel business. So all our concrete customers purchase reinforcing steel when they're building, they use a lot of reinforcing steel. So we have a, a facility where we, we import reinforcing steel and then turn it into various different products uh, depending on the depending on the project that it's going into, but uh, generally speaking, we sell the reinforcing steel to the exact same customers that are buying the concrete from us, and we have a production facility in Toowoomba and a second production facility in Brisbane to service those customers. Um, we then have uh, a quarries business where we manufacture aggregates and feed those aggregates into a number of our concrete plants. Um, and then we also produce other construction materials at our quarries for road construction and various other various other construction activities that the concrete uh, the quarries participate in. Our quarries are located in southeast Queensland. We have another one up in central Queensland near Emerald, and then a third one uh, of of note up at Cloncurry that services um, infrastructure projects on roads, etc., along with the mining industry up there. Um, we have a large precast business based in Brisbane where we do all sorts of precast work. The last few years, it's been tied up doing tunnel segments. We did the Cross River Tunnel in Brisbane and then moved on to the Sydney Metro Tunnel. Um, but we have capability there to do large bridge work, super tees, pre-stressed concrete. Um, however, right at the moment, that precast business is, is fully committed servicing the Sydney Metro Tunnel, where we produce the segments in Brisbane and then transport them down to Sydney. Um, we also then run a, a, a series of trucks, whether they be gravel haulage trucks or cement haulage trucks to, serve, to get our products from our quarries and cement plant, uh, reinforcing delivery trucks to get our products to our customers. So we have a transport business based here in Southeast Queensland that distributes the products that we manufacture uh, through to the customers. Um, and then we run a services business as part of that 
vertically integrated construction materials business, which is where we do uh, large bulk haulage projects for mining customers. We would have uh, in excess of 65 quad and triple road trains working up in the Northwest Minerals Province, right up into the Northern Territory, working for large mining houses such as Glencore, where we have long-term bulk haulage contracts in place to deliver the constant, uh, the raw materials from satellite mining pits into their major processing plants. And that business alone represents about $100 million worth of our revenue at Wagner's and uh, has grown rapidly in the last few years. We've made a significant capital investment into that business. And um, as I said, long-term haulage contracts and has really contributed to the revenue growth over the last few years of our business. Uh, we also do mobile concrete work where we take our mobile batch plants and agitator fleet out to customers' sites and uh, are currently supplying concrete services to a large mine down in New South Wales and also to a large wind farm project in central Queensland. And we've got that mobile concrete capability and we have done projects all over the world um, with that capability in the past. Currently, as I said, supplying a, a large mine and supplying a wind farm project. Um, following on from there, we have a contract crushing services business where we do the same thing. Basically, we take our, our track mounted crushing fleet out to mining customers or infrastructure projects and supply crushing services to make various gravels and road bases and fill products for, um, for our clients' projects. Um, so then moving on from the core construction materials and services business, we oper operate a composite fibre technologies business, or as we call it, CFT. Um, that business uh, was, was developed in-house. We manufacture these machines that we call pultrusion machines, and we produce a fibre composite product that is effectively a replacement for a piece of um, RHS steel or a piece of timber and it's a, it's a construction material. About 50% of our revenue in that business comes out of the electrical industry. So we manufacture power poles and cross arms that hold the power lines up. Um, particularly uh, our largest customer there is, is in New South Wales. So you'll see our product in a, lot of in, in a lot of electrical infrastructure across New South Wales, followed by Queensland, we export to New Zealand um, we have exported our product over to Malaysia in the past. So it's a, it's a lightweight, non-corrosive, non-conductive replacement product for steel and timber. We also then take that product and manufacture boardwalks and pedestrian infrastructure. And there are a lot of, a lot of those projects around the coastline of Australia. We've, uh, we've sold a lot of the product into the Middle East and into the UK. And we have recently invested in a factory and a pultrusion machine in Texas, in the USA, where we have just commissioned that machine over the last 12 months and are starting to really make some serious inroads into sales over in the USA with our composites product. So it's an exciting part of our business. Revenue continues to grow um, and we are seeing it now add value to our bottom line um, and, and uh, particularly the Australian New Zealand arm of that business making a, a reasonably valuable contribution to our EBIT year on year now. Um, and then finally, the only other area I wanted to touch on is our cement free concrete. Back in about 2007, we started to invest heavily into developing a concrete that didn't utilize cement powder to um, to activate the binders, aggregate and sand. So we still use aggregates and sand, no different to what we do uh, when we use typical cement, but we've developed a geopolymer product that uh, we manufacture in house that has, uh, has the ability to replace cement. So when we look at cement, um, every cubic meter of concrete that's batched using traditional cement um, is responsible for about 250 kilos of carbon emissions. So if you choose to build a project out of our earth-friendly concrete, uh, for every four cubic metres you consume, there is a tonne of carbon saved. Um, 
that's been a bit of a challenge for us, that business. We have invested heavily into it, as I said, and unfortunately, we just don't get the market take up here in Australia. However, we've seen significant uh, interest in cement, uh, in cement free concrete or technologies that uh, reduce carbon emissions across Europe. And our focus has been in recent years to develop that business around Europe. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're really looking now at just how much money we continue in investing in that business. It's, it's uh, one of the areas that's really under review, waiting, uh, waiting for the market to sort of come on board and take up the technology. So that probably sums up what we do at Wagner's and uh, happy to sort of launch into any Q&A. All right, great. Thanks very much, Cam. We do have a few questions coming up here. Um, first, just to kick things off, um, Wagner's obviously IPO'd on the ASX in 2017. Can you just help remind the audience, um, you know, what's been achieved since the IPO in terms of investment and in particular growing the capabilities and scale of the business? Yeah, so the key, the key areas are in, of investment have been, we re-entered the concrete market in Southeast Queensland, and we now operate out of seven concrete plants. Significant, uh, significant investment and effort gone into developing that concrete business. Um, we have uh, over doubled our capacity in our composites business. So we've invested heavily in new pultrusion machines, allowing us to increase our our uh, service offering to the customers in the composites business. Well, you already touched on the investment we've made over in Texas in the USA to develop a composites business over there. Um, that's very much in its infancy, but the, you know, we've, we've purchased the land, we've built the factory and we have installed our first production machine. And then uh, uh, there's two more areas that we've invested significant capital into since listing and that is bulk haulage. Uh, I pointed out before that business uh, has been very capital intensive and now is responsible for circa hundred odd million dollars worth of revenue. And then finally, uh, we've put a significant investment into the UK where we manufacture our earth friendly concrete. Quick uh, quarries as well. Um, uh, Castle Ray and Shepton were both new acquisitions since we listed. And we've um, invested heavily in our fixed plant at, uh, at Well Camp as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, just turning to COVID, um, your business was clearly uh, impacted by supply chain bottlenecks and rising cost of raw materials. Have all of these impacts uh, dissipated? Uh, they have now, Sam, but there's no doubt that we were subject to increased costs through that period that uh, in a lot of cases we were unable to uh, to claim back in, in increased selling prices to our customers. So that put a lot of pressure on our business. Supply chain pressures really um, came on fast through COVID and our, you know, some of our contracts, we were unable to, to pass those on, but yeah, they have dissipated now and we're, we're back onto a, onto a level playing field. Okay, great. And just on pricing, um, can you talk through recent price changes, uh, particularly in Southeast Queensland concrete? Um, how much has it increased and how does this compare to other cities and states? Um, we're, still, we're still well behind some of the southern, southern cities. However, we have seen, we have seen a significant in, increase, a significant increase um, in, in selling price in southeast Queensland. The last sort of nine months, I would say, have been very positive and um, we've managed to get all of our customers up to, a, to an appropriate return. Um, where previously we were, we were operating at sort of serious negative margin numbers at the concrete gate. Okay, got you. And you touched on um, bulk haulage. How many trucks um, within the fleet do you have and what exactly do they do? Um, how important is this business in terms of cross-sell opportunity into other customers? So the, the bulk haulage business is a bit of an opportunistic business, Sam. It's an outlier. It's not part of the vertically integrated model here in Southeast Queensland. We run about 55 uh, road train combinations uh, and then flex up and down to sort of 60 to 70 combinations using subcontractors as required. So we are a, a very large bulk haulage business in that mining sector. Um, and uh, as I said, it's, it's more of an opportunistic um, services business to our mining customers. Um, some of those customers buy cement, some of them buy quarry materials. 
but uh, in essence, it's a it's a standalone business that that doesn't really feed into the vertically integrated model back in southeast Queensland. But um, it, it does make a, a very valuable contribution year on year, and it's um, it's been a successful investment. Okay, great. And just turning to M and A. Uh, as well as products and solutions more broadly. Are there any new product verticals you'd uh, like to expand into in the future and either organically or inorganically? Look, I think um, a very attractive space for us uh, regarding M&A is in our composites business. Um, if, 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 if we could find an appropriate, um, an appropriate target in the US, that would help us accelerate our growth in the US, that would be very, very valuable to us. And uh, it's something that we've been on the lookout for for a couple of years now and called it out in previous presentations. So, you know, if, if there was something out there that we could find that, that uh, would bolt onto our composites business to enable a platform for growth very quickly in the US, that's, a, that's certainly a major target for us. Locally here, I guess anything that consumes cement and quarry materials is a target. Um, so if, if, a, if a concrete business came on board that complemented our, our existing vertically integrated model, that would add a lot of value as well. Okay, thanks. Um, and then just turning to earth-friendly concrete, um, you sort of touched on the business a little bit, but how do we think about balancing, you know, capital spend within that business versus um, building end market demand and take up as you, as you touched on? Well, Sam, anyone that sort of followed our last results release would, would understand that we're doing a bit of a critical review on it right at the moment to understand uh, where we're taking that business. Um, we've been investing significant money into EFC over the last, well, over many, many years, but we've had a real accelerated approach over the last five years. And um, we're, we're at a point now where we're ready for the market to, to come and adopt the technology. So we have, we have been sort of at a at a real inflection point where we've reduced spend and um, are really waiting now for either a third party investor to come on board and assist us to fund the growth or alternatively wait, sit back for the, for the market to really adopt the technology. So we're ready to go. We've got a great product, proven technology. Um, it is a cement free concrete and there is a market for it out there. But uh, it, it's just a challenge as to when when the consumers will adopt it. Thank you. And just 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 on that, a couple more questions coming in. Um, just in terms of the sort of customer conversations that you're having within UK and Europe, how do they differ to the domestic market and perhaps you know elsewhere? Uh, I would say in in the UK and Europe. The, the customer base over there, or certainly a portion of the customer base are actually starting to demand cement free concrete. So that's the key difference. Um, over here, people are happy to use um, high slag, high fly ash blends to reduce the cement contact content in a, in a concrete mix. However, in, in across Europe, we're seeing people um, that are really committed to um, carbon reducing technologies calling out for a cement free concrete, which is what we actually produce. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and maybe just changing gears a little bit. Um, can you help us how, help us um, understand how you think about the core business versus more project-based work, um, including the margin profile across um, across the two revenue streams? Uh, well, the core-based business work, I guess, is really um, it's a vertically integrated business here in Southeast Queensland. So cement through to concrete, including steel and aggregates. Um, uh, and they all have different revenue, uh, revenue and margin profiles. Um, the concrete business itself is quite a low margin business, but um, it helps with the, con the cement business, which is, a, which is a higher margin, probably one of our highest margin businesses. Um, on the project side of things, we really look at it as, as Cam pointed out, we've got our transport projects. Now they sort of, looking at a margin profile there depending on how heavy your use of subcontractors is but you're sort of anywhere from the low to mid teens in, in those sort of businesses um, our concrete projects businesses in the past have delivered you know margins in excess of 30 percent currently we're not seeing those margins they'd be be lower than that um, contract crushing a uh, similar sort of story. It's it's been as high as sort of 35% margins on some of that work. 
um, at the moment, those those margins aren't as high. Um, uh, and then I guess the precast part of the business is also, we look at that as really a project-based business. Most of that stuff that Cam pulled out, so all the tunnel segment stuff that we've been doing is really a project-based delivery, as is any of the super tees or things like that. So once again, we run that business more on a project-based business. That one's sort of you know, high teens to mid 20% margins on, on that sort of business. Okay, great. Thank you. I think that probably brings us to the end of um, Q&A uh, for the time being. Maybe I can pass it back to, to you, Cameron and Ferg, if you've just got any sort of closing closing comments or remarks. Uh, Sam, probably, uh, we're, you know, it was just a good opportunity to introduce people to what we do at Wagner's. Um, uh, we have, we have uh, been on a fairly intensive capital campaign since listing. Um, We've got, uh, as I called out, the, the Composites business is well positioned now to uh, to really make a contribution to our business. The investment we've made into the USA is uh, is up and running now and, and starting to generate revenue. So, um, you know, we're really looking forward to what we can achieve this with the business now over the next over the next period. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Well, if anyone on the audience has any follow-up or questions or would like to connect with the management team, um, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, that um, completes today's session with Wagner. So thank you, Cam, and thank you, Fergus. Thanks, Bye. Sam. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.